Thank you very much, Luis, for the introduction. And I want to thank my society for putting this event together, this time face to face. Um, and so um, I'm going to talk about an initiative that we started off um, in Latin America. But first, a second, I'm going to share with you uh, our, our agenda for anti-corruption and transparency, a little bit of what we do. So the f what uh, people know us uh, from, it's our who's who, so we've worked a lot over t uh, uh, 15 years, which is, like we said, our anniversary on tools that uh, tell us who's who in parliament. So we've done that in Argentina and Colombia and Mexico. Also, we have created, uh, especially in Latin America, networks of organizations that work things like we do and also parliamentarians and we work together many times and we're part of alliances uh, that work on open parliament and open government. And then something that we're really, really proud of is the assessment tools that we have created, especially in Latin America, and that measure the level of transparency that our parliaments are at. We've done that, we've measured it six times in Latin America already, and we've shared our experience in Africa, and they're doing it as well there. They've, I think they've done it two times already, and we're trying to create a sort of a network and, and share experience as well with Asia and the Western Balkans, hopefully. We work a lot in open government, but today I'm going to share our experience on cross-referencing uh, corruption, on uh, financial disclosures, and uh, advocacy campaigns and litigation, which is a three sort of uh, part of our agenda, especially um, um, on, on the last part, especially on uh, our ability to litigate against uh, different uh, agencies in the uh, government. So our initiative today, I'm going to share these five faces today, which are five politicians from Colombia um, in Latin America. Col uh, Claudia, she's the former mayor of Bogotá. Jose, he's the former mayor, uh, governor of the department of Tolima. Eduardo, he's the former governor of the department of Magdalena. Ivan, speaker of the Senate today. And Camilo, uh, an MP of the lower, lower house in Colombia. But these are only five of the faces of political of Colombian politicians, which we're going to come back later about who and why they are here, but these are only selected cases of 2073, um, what we call PEPs, politically exposed persons, uh, that uh, we have analyzed in this initiative. So. This initiative is called Joining the Dots, and we've started working on this in 2020. And it's called Joining the Dots, and then in between brackets, with PEPs, with politically exposed persons. So this initiative was originally spearheaded by the IMF when, uh, I think it was during the pandemic or a little bit earlier, they put together a sort of anti-corruption challenge where organizations brought ideas to use civic tech and fight corruption. So we won one of, that, of those, and what they did is helped us develop a sort of prototype to crisscross data to find uh, corruption cases. Or so in that moment, it was only to find conflict of interest of the um, uh, uh, political world in Colombia. So at that moment, we started off very little, and uh, we've worked already three years in this initiative. And just to give you a volume of the databases that we've worked with, uh, so you see that there are 4 million public contracts, 135,000 campaign donors, financial disclosures, PEPs, relatives of PEPs, 
uh, mining permits and informal complaints. I think just two little um, notes on this. We're really, really um, uh, proud in a way of some of the information that is behind those big numbers. So for example, uh, at the bottom you see informal complaints. So we have this scene that we worked in uh, with all of the data that is formal data gave to us, gi given to us by the government of Colombia or by the parliament of Colombia. So we decided we needed to sort of see the informal data, where we can take that informal data and try to cross it with the formal one. So what we did is we hired a, a set of volunteers that surveyed for like a couple of months the, um, uh, the media outlets of different regions in Colombia and recorded all of the complaints and the different scandals that the uh, journalists um, reported in those uh, media and put the, that data all down in an Excel. We found of those, 504 people that are coincide with our PEPs. <coughs> and so since the beginning also of the initiative, we worked on specific red flags and then we added more and more. So those are sort of questions that we do to ourselves so that the data talks to us and we can find conclusions in a way. So today we have around 15 red flags, but they're c categorized in those. So the first one is, of course, it's, it's the easiest one, but the most complicated one or complicated one. Um, that is the um, uh, PEPs that are obliged by law to submit a financial disclosure declaration, but they don't. The second is the uh, irregularities that uh, these people fall into when they turn in uh, most of the times their financial disclosure declaration. And this can be, for example, um, a PEP that um, declares other income, but that other income uh, is not reflected or it doesn't uh, um, publish which of the companies or, or where does that income come from. And the last one, which is the one that has more um, flags inside or more red flags inside categorized is the illegality. So the uh, unlawful activities that they have turned into. This can be PEPs that have had uh, participation in a state contract um, or PEPs that have family that have participated in government contracts, or uh, these can be PEPs that have been funded, uh, uh, have, have received funds for the campaign, uh, and those campa campaign funders are uh, government contractors and have turned into government contractors after they uh, financed the campaign of a specific politician. And these have turned, all of these numbers have turned into, let's say, 3,500 red flags. But what do these sort of red flags mean to us? Just to give you some numbers, bear with me with the arithmetic. So we've categorized the red flags and we'll see that uh, this a little bit later as well. So for the case of the campaign funders that have been awarded um, uh, state contracts, these are more than 1,200,000, uh, 2,100. The case of the PEPs that have not submitted their financial disclosure is the highest one, and that is 42, around 42% 42 of the whole universe of the analysis that we uh, have uh, done. The third one is the relatives um, of the PEPs that have uh, contracts with the government. The third one, the companies that are contractors and are linked some way with the PEPs. And then the third one is the campaigns, the PEPs that um, have been 
funded by uh, public officials uh, or the campaigns of the PEPs that have been funded by public officials. Let's see if we can have sort of a closer look. We'll go back to the first uh, slide. So, Claudia Lopez, she was a mayor until 2023 in Colombia, and we can see that she has 74 red flags. 74 red flags is a lot. <laughs> <laughs> and she received funding uh, from public officials, which is illegal in Colombia, and uh, more than 70 funders got contracts with the state agencies and 30 of them in, in, in different state agencies, but 30 specifically in the municipality of Bogota. Uh, and we al always do the math of how much money these contracts uh, signify. So in this case, it's $4.5 million. And also one thing is this is uh, sort of uh, examples of, because they're really, really well known in Colombia, there's a lot of people that are behind these that could have the same examples, only we, we can't say that they're mayor or they are a, a specific governor. In this case, Jose Orozco also has 31 red flags and 21 out of 60 campaign donors uh, were hired at his uh, governor office uh, and the contracts abide uh, or account for six, uh, $600,000. Uh, dollars. Eduardo Calcedo, too, he's the governor of the Department of Magdalena. He has 14 red flags. Um, and uh, we found that there's an event planning uh, firm that donated $15,000 to his campaign. And that same group, uh, after the campaign or after he was elected, uh, totaled $1.5 million uh, in, uh, in contracts with the government of Magdalena. <laughs> Ivan Name is today the Speaker of the Senate. And he has seven red flags, and also he has several problems with relatives, the hiring of relatives. So he has hired uh, at least two or three of his sons, his brothers, uh, and uh, nephews that have contracts with different agencies in the government of Colombia, and this abides for uh, $400,000 in Colombia. Colombia is a really, really poor country, I have to say, like uh, many of the rest of Latin America. And lastly, Camilo Avila, uh, he is uh, a regular MP. He has four red flags, and he owns a company that he didn't... Uh, um, disclosed in his financial declaration. That company uh, has one million contracts in, uh, or the, the, um, the money that reflects one million co in contracts uh, with the government of Colombia. So, okay. in all of the red flags that we put together and that we found of contracts um, and funding, and but it's, this is money specifically of contracts. It doesn't mean that the government of Colombia or any level of the government of Colombia does, wouldn't have spared that money. This is the money that we're talking about. Um, it doesn't mean that it's all of it is illicit, all of it is unneeded, is that we are talking about contracts that mean four billion dollars for the government or for the state of Colombia. So what did we do? So as an organization, what did we do with all of this data that we had in our hands or that we have in our hands? So we're, this is a, a work in progress. So this, what I'm going to say now is what we're thinking of doing. And also in the questions, 
I would receive suggestions from you if you want to, to suggest next steps as well. So first, remember this slide that I showed earlier. Um, so we are going to choose cases in each of the flags that we have here. So we're going to choose the 10 best cases in uh, the campaign funders that were awarded state contracts, that the more visible or the <coughs> ones that signify more money. Uh, and we are going to do strategic litigation against the, the government of Colombia. And we're going to do <coughs> that with one, three, four, and five. And we're going to choose 10 cases, five and five. In the case of number two, which is the um, uh, public officials that have the that have to turn in their financial statement but haven't done it, they haven't turned in any financial statement in the f last four years, no document. And so the government of Colombia has a sort of online form where you can uh, complain or you can report anything that you think is wrong. But these are, and you can do it only one by one. You can't do sort of upload the big data. So we have to have volunteers in our team to do one by one the 800 plus uh, forms uh, to, to, to uh, report this to the government of Colombia, who uh, we don't know why they don't know yet. And the second step that we'll do is, so in the middle of all this process, the government, uh, like a lower uh, agency, uh, like uh, it's, it's called a subsecretary of commerce and industry, by uh, issuing a specific decree, they limited the law on access to information that was passed by the parliament. So you can't do that. You can't limit a law that was passed by a higher level institution than the one that you are at. And so they're limiting the ac our access to information because of that uh, decree or resolution. And so we're going to contest that in the courts as well. The second uh, point is that we've had, we have what we call sort of the Bible in a way. So we've recorded all of the things that we've had to do uh, when we started, uh, as when we started this initiative. So the databases were all dirty in a way we've had to um, uh, clean them up. So we've had to um, uh, ask several times for information or that the requests were returned uh, with um, a, a denigatory of information and all that sort of learnings uh, that in a way what they do is they restrict uh, the access to information, but not only the Colombian government has had uh, or has made a really, really big effort in putting all this legal infrastructure together that doesn't work. And so in a way, these are comments on all of the infrastructure that they have put together. If they want, they can <laughs> sort of reform themselves, otherwise it will be trash, we don't know. And then the third is we've partnered, of course we're from Argentina, and this is in Colombia, it's just far away. Um, and so we've partnered with organizations that will help us litigate and organizations that will help us take this to the media and organizations that we can uh, sort of uh, uh, have conversations and discussions peer to peer to go deeper into our work. And this is, like I said, in Colombia we've done uh, that uh, this also in Nigeria where we found 400 public officials that uh, are supposed or perceived as also donors of 400 uh, firms that are government contractors. And we've done this initiative with EITI, Open Ownership, and uh, Budget, which is a Nigerian organization, and Follow Taxes, which is another Nigerian organization, and we're doing it in Argentina right now with um, databases of uh, social um, subsidies that the government gives out to people. And in the future, 
hopefully this year, but we don't know. We're going to expand it to Peru and Paraguay. And just to end, this is, uh, so as an organization, we have been uh, sort of along these 15 years, we have more concentrated on building and advocating for more str strong uh, legal infrastructures, for open government plans or op uh, open parliamentary plans or creating, uh, sort of exercising the right to access to information and then making it sort of the practice, making it a little bit deeper. And then, <coughs> so we realized that we had a lot of data, a lot, uh, and so we think, we don't know if we're right or not yet, uh, but we think that we should make that data talk to us, make use of that data, uh, because we know where it comes from, we know the integrity that we had to go to to get it, uh, and maybe we think that we could be factors of change for that. So I think that's it. Thank you very, very much. Questions, both on Slido and in the room. If you have questions, we have roving mics. So the most popular question on Slido is, you've identified a lot of problems here. Um, what data do you have on any impact of taking action against those problems? Are you seeing the politicians <coughs> voted out when these, kind of, when these kind of red flags come to light? Do you see the politicians get voted out? Get voted in? Uh, get voted out of office. <laughs> no, I don't see any change yet. Like. Uh, so, so th these are the universe of these um, of our uh, uh, final analysis because there's 20,000 PEPs in Colombia. So we narrowed it down to 2,073, which are the president, the ministers, the governors, uh, the the national uh, legislators and the local or the provincial, let's say, legislators. Those are 2,073. Of the 2,073, at least half of them have something, some sort of irregularity. That is a lot. Uh, so, and, and of those, many of these will have to go to the courts. Maybe not, will, will not be in jail, but they will have to have I don't know, maybe two, three years of explaining of why they did this. Um, and so when they are too many, I don't, or we don't see the uh, consequence. So people will keep on or have been uh, voting for them anyways. So maybe when they clean up a little bit, then there, there will be sort of a, a, I don't know, like a, an informal sanction, sanction from the um, community, we don't know, yet. Yeah. Difficult, difficult when it's so endemic, yeah. definitely. Um, second most popular question on Slido is whether project members have been threatened and how do you ensure the safety of your team and your collaborators? So, the, luckily for us, the, we are in Argentina, which is five hours flight to Colombia. <laughs> <laughs> so we haven't uh, had any problems yet. The ones that will, do, so I went to Colombia in November of 2023. I was scared, but this is not something that we have put in the media yet. And the litigation, we haven't done it yet. And so we're, we're planning on doing it very softly, but yes, it could be a threat. So Colombians have a history of, of, of killing a person that did an, a, a goal in the, um, in the World Cup, the Soccer World Cup. He did a goal to his own uh, team and they killed him. So this is much more, <laughs> much worse, I think. I don't know. <laughs> so it's, the, Colombia has a history of uh, threats and of kidnapping and, uh, but we, it's not a variable yet. That's good. 
Um, next question, uh, would you be worried that the policy recommendations in the next steps would uh, aid the evolution of bad behavior to become less, are you in an arms race where it's just gonna prompt more sophistication? Yeah, so, so we have a back pocket uh, sort of card there. Since the initiative was um, initiated and spearheaded by the IMF, so the IMF is our ally, and the IMF can put conditions to the government of Colombia, and so we're hoping that they do that. They already have heard uh, one of the points that we brought to them, to the IMF, uh, on the access to public information limit by a lower agency, and they have put that as an alert in the reports that they do every year to the different countries. In the one of Colombia, they've done it already. So the Colombian government knows that there is a, a sort of a, a not comfortable situation with the limits to access to public information. They know that. Uh, and so uh, maybe they can get, uh, I don't know, prepared. The second uh, thing is that, of course, we don't um, imagine that they would implement all of these, but if we have the IMF, uh, we think uh, fortunately that they would uh, hear us more rather, so it's an institution, not that I love the IMF, but it's an institution that would be heard more than, than we do. The government of Colombia has more at stake with them than they do with us, so yeah. Are there questions in the room before we go to the next? Question on Slido. I can keep pulling off. I'll keep pulling off. In the meantime, the top rated ones from Slido. So what kind of retaliation or reaction have you seen from the officials in looking at their financials and exposing their financial discrepancies? So the first one was the limit to the, to the access to public information law. And it's a big limit. So you can't see now the, um, uh, you can only see the data from uh, the PEP, uh, and you can't see relatives, you can't see spouses, and uh, there's a limit also in conflict of interest. So all of the financial statements in the world should have sort of uh, at least a couple of variables regarding uh, conflict of interest. And that is something that it's, it's being locked now. Uh, we hope that when we contest this uh, in the courts, or if we can do it amicably, of course, because the agency that did this has changed the head. And the new head will hopefully, we think, have a meeting with us and see if there's a possibility of um, annulling that uh, regulation. We don't know, but if we, if we make it uh, if we make a strong uh, argument, maybe there's a possibility. I think that's, that's when uh, they notice that you're doing something uh, that could harm them. But also there's, um, so we've chatted extensively with a lot of stakeholders, so society, MPs, uh, public sector, but I don't want to talk, uh, I don't know, badly about the Colombians because Argentines are like the same and Chileans and I'm sure UK, politicians too, but there's like a, we say in Spanish, a big thick, uh, uh, thick um, skin, so they don't care if they appear in the news saying that they have robbed the food of the starving children, they don't care, uh, and so we, I mean that's, a, we don't care either, as long as the courts uh, give the reason to us. Um, next question, unless there is any, we have one in the room? Hang on, there's a, a mic on its way to you from behind. Yeah, I, I have a question. Um, um, the speaker beforehand spoke about institutional opposition uh, or support, and I'm just wondering in this case, in terms of um, know your clients' regulation, um, to, what, to what extent is the financial sector um, a potential ally here in terms of um, insisting that uh, you know they have full disclosure on the source of money that might be transferred to them, or is this money heading to offshore to places like Panama and so forth? So the public sector, uh, the, the private sector, sorry, is involved. 
in this. So there's a, like a gray area between public and private sector today um, because they are the beneficiaries of titles and contracts and uh, so they have like um, uh, a less of a meandering road to get to the public officials. And the fact that the numbers show that there's a lot of, uh, it's a good consequence for the private sector to have funded a campaign and then get a contract. Uh, I mean, there, uh, there's a big benefit. I don't know if that answers your question. Much help from the financial sector. Uh, it sounds like you're not getting a lot of help from the financial sector in terms of... No. <laughs> <laughs> no. Uh, we haven't asked uh, also, but, but no. Also, there's a lot of, uh, just to, uh, to, to, to complete sort of the, the whole idea, in Colombia there's a lot of, uh, that's why we started it off with trying to work with um, extractive industries, uh, with the extractive industries sector. There's a lot of illegal extractives in Colombia, so there's a lot of firms, mostly uh, being said that they're Chinese, but they could be Russian, whatever, and they can be Colombian as well, they can be, I don't know, the mayors can be the owners. Uh, that uh, practice mining illegally in many, many parts of, the, of Colombia, so that is another uh, sort of step that we should go into, analyze those contracts, see if they're, ex if they're exploring, if they're exploiting, or what they're doing. Uh, but we haven't gotten there yet. Uh, we have more questions on Slido, if you're happy to take a few more, Ray. Um, I see a Colombian in the room. <laughs> <laughs> practical question, how do you identify who <coughs> is a family member of a pet? Okay, th there's uh, a couple of things. So in the, um, in the financial disclosure, they have to uh, put the name of their spouse and that is really relevant for us because they have to give the uh, sort of ID number and so we in Latin America we all have the same last name so we Maria Baron can be like 10 other people too so the, that, that number is really crucial that's why we make a lot a big point in accessing to the financial declarations and asset declaration and conflict of interest declaration also, they have to declare if any of the family members, and this goes to brothers and kids, uh, if they think that they could have a conflict of interest with any of these. If they declare, we have their names. And then also that's one of the databases that we uh, sort of created. It's in the Who's Who that we created uh, for Colombia in 2016 and 18 and 20. We ask personally each member to uh, tell us who he's married to and, uh, and who, how many kids they have. And also in Colombia, so for example, I am Maria Baron and a second name, which corresponds to, uh, second last name that corresponds to my uh, mother. And the kids usually have those two last names. And so you can put together those two last names and you have the mother and the father. It's, it's not so complicated as it sounds. Um, and so we can guess who's um, uh, relative to who. But that is informal data because we don't have, in many cases, the, the IDs. And remember that only half uh, of the members have uh, disclosed or given the documents of disclo uh, financial disclosure. So we, there's a lot of data. This can be double or triple if we had all the financial declarations. Are there more questions in the room? Uh, one over in the other one. Hi there. Um, firstly, amazing work. Um, I can see something uh, working quite similar in, in my home country of South Africa. So my question is kind of related to that. Um, how do you decide which countries you work in and how do you decide which organizations you, you partner with, especially if you have to do litigation in those countries? Thank you. 
So in the case of Colombia, we decided it really, really pragmatic because of the challenge of the IMF. So we had to choose a country that the IMF was active in, and the IMF had an office. So for example, in, in Argentina, they don't have an office. So it's really, um, it had to be one of those countries. Uh, it had to be a Latin American country. And it also, since we started it off with EITI, the Extractive Industries Transparency Initiative, it had to be an EITI country. So Colombia is all of those variables. Um, then, so we, in Latin America, fortunately, we work a lot in networks. So we know our partners in all of the countries. So the classic TI chapter is one of our partners. So we talked with them a lot. Uh, but not, not all of the organizations do everything that we, we need for this initiative. So we, um, so we consulted a lot with Transparencia por Colombia. Uh, and then we are going to do the litigations with another organization that is more specialized in, in litigation. Um, and then there's another organization, it's, it's kind of like a CSO, but also more uh, dedicated to news. And so they do a lot of work with politicians and they're really, really high in social networks that we partnered with as well, so that when we go sort of out public, they can viralize uh, the idea. But if this was done, for example, in the case of Nigeria, uh, also we work with Budget, it's a really big organization in Nigeria, we really, really liked it, uh, like it, and also follow taxes, which is uh, like an organization that follows taxes, and, and uh, works more like the interior of, of Nigeria. But in civil society, I think uh, in our world, the, the parliamentary monitoring organizations and the, the, you know, like I said, the TI chapters, we really, uh, there's a community there. And there's always sort of the, the luck. So we're very lucky because there's always like a helping hand on the other uh, or on a very far part of the world. And there's always someone that knows the other and there's a really, I would say, uh, a, a community that, that really wants to get uh, to the bottom of, of things like this. Maria, we're in a bit of an auction situation with the next two questions. It feels like these are really popular questions, so I'm gonna go through those two next. So, uh, and winning now is uh, what is the general public's view of the project? So is there a lot of awareness and do people want to use it as a reference to vote or is it just no, not? We easy? haven't made it public yet. Okay. Yeah. So I guess they will, they will know and it, it's, it, there won't be sort of like a launch. It will be, there's a question there. Uh, and there, I think there will be sort of like a, I don't know, pu publishing of specific things. Because if we do like a specific law, a launch and a presentation, whatever, I think it's not our personality. We, we want to go to the litigation and the, the cases in a way. And then second one about privacy. Is the government using privacy of the pets, presumably, and their families as an excuse to block the investigation? The, you mean the, oh, the, the, the yellow one. Yeah. Uh, use privacy as an excuse. Yes. Yeah. Um, the, the law that has been has limited the access to public information is uh, limits on the grounds of privacy for uh, uh, personal privacy. And also many of the requests that have been uh, denied are on privacy. Okay. And then question in the room. Hi, um, I'm interested to know if there's any type of technology you use, because that would be in a lot of documents and a lot of reading, uh, if, did you use any like assistive technology to browse through, organize, um, you know, categorize? So we, uh, what the IMF did was they funded our prototype, which is a tool, uh, we call it a robot, a mini robot, to cr crisscross data. So we put the, the variables that we want them to find the robot and, and it does. And so, but then afterwards we need to analyze, uh, you know, the, the, the results very uh, deeply. And so, yeah, 
that. A really good question on Slido. So what makes a country, a, in your view, a good candidate for doing something like this? I, I think I, I don't want to say that Co Colombia is the most corrupt, but I think the good candidates are the most corrupt uh, or the ones that um, that you would question, uh, you would think that they would do things like this. So practically the whole of Latin America could be a, a good candidate. The thing is that, uh, for example, Colombia has uh, legislation on um, uh, on uh, uh, beneficial ownership, yeah. And so they have all the beneficial owners of the firms, only they don't do it public. And so I think a good country would be someone that has that public. Uh, and of course, this is a work in progress. We could also go to third countries that have beneficial ownership and then ask for information about Colombia or the country that we're working at. Uh, but we need to like we need to spend more time, and I don't know how much time we more we can spend in this. But if there's like a crazy, very detailed oriented person that can uh, sort of dedicate days and nights, it's incredible what you can find. Probably the last question now, I think. Um, so you're uh, looking at economically developing countries. Uh, do you have plans to target one of the more developed countries? Yes, uh, we can. Uh, I think, like if you ask me, uh, since we started it off with uh, thinking about extractive industries, I think Canada is a good candidate too. Because they have a lot of, well, all of the, of the uh, high income countries have uh, ties with the smaller ones. But I think Canada, in the case of uh, the mining sector, uh, is really, really tied with, uh, with Latin America specifically. And also, they sort of have a beneficial ownership uh, legislation that they should, uh, at some moment in time, make public. Um, and also it could be really, really interesting to contest that why they're not doing it so far. So, yeah. but let's not get too bigger and let's get the Colombians in <laughs> still. And then we'll see what happens with, with other countries too. Amazing. Thank you so much, Maria. Please join me.